All right, so welcome to How To Dino. In this video, we're covered the new appeals feature within Dinobot. To get started, head over to the Dinobot website, dino.gg, click on the Manage Servers button, click on the server you'd like to manage, We'll head over to the modules tab and then find the moderation section here. We'll click on settings. Then up here, as you can see, we've got this new appeal section. We'll go ahead and click on this. We get this pop-up saying enable mute slash ban DMs. So in order for the appeals feature to work, we actually have to enable the DM on kick mute ban option. So we'll go ahead and click enable it. And then what that will do is if we come back to settings, we'll go ahead and refresh that will just go ahead and enable this option here. So we'll head over back to appeals and we can allow appeals for banned users or muted users. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable both of these. So this will actually send out a DM for users that have been banned. And this will also send out a DM for users that have been muted with the appeals link so they can go ahead and appeal. Next up, we're going to leave the waiting period as zero. If you want to have some sort of delay before the actual appeal is sent out, you can go ahead and change this value here. But keep in mind, this value is in days. So if you were to enter a one here, it would be one day before Dino would actually send out the appeal. So we'll leave it as zero so it can be sent out instantly. And then if you want to go ahead and include an invite URL back to your server, you can go ahead and do so here. I'm going to go ahead and do the discord.gg slash dino since that is the invite for the dino server so i'll go ahead and hit update so the user will also have this url sent out with the appeal and then here we can actually select an appeal form so if you've already used the forms feature and you've selected the appeal template or selected the checkbox to make your form an appeal form you can go ahead and actually select that form here. If you haven't, we can go ahead and create a form right now. Now we'll give our form a name. I'm just going to call it appeals. And then we can also give it a description. And then we've got some default values here. So our default question here is why did you get muted slash banned? We've also got another one that says, why do you believe your appeal should be accepted? And then the third one here is saying, is there anything else you would like for us to know? So these are just very generalized questions. You can go ahead and edit these values by just clicking on the question. And as you can see, it highlights everything. So you can just like clear it out. But I'm going to leave that there for now. You can also change the format by clicking on this little drop down here. So right now we have it as a paragraph so the user could a lengthy response here but if we want something a little bit shorter we can choose the short answer option and then we've also got options for multiple choice and check boxes but i'm just going to go ahead and leave this as it is we have an option down here to make this required selection so the user must input something in order to submit the form we got an option to duplicate and delete and then the same goes here so we can change the question here to whatever we want make this required or not change the format and then if you'd like to add some more questions to your form you can go ahead and hit this add question button i'll populate a new response and you can go ahead and enter your question here so i'm going to go ahead and delete this i'm going to leave everything as default next up we're going to choose our submissions channel so if you've gone ahead and created a channel specifically for forms you can go ahead and set this to that channel i do not have that so i'm just going to go ahead and send my submissions to my logs channel and then you've got submission managers so these are users that will actually have access to view the submissions within the dashboard so we can actually select the role we'd like to grant permissions to do this so these users will be able to view and manage the form submissions. And then here at the bottom, we've got appeals and then the mute slash ban appeals. So when you're creating a form using the forms module, you'll have this option here that you can enable. Down here, we've got some options, one submission per user. Since this is an appeal form, you probably don't want users sending in multiple appeals. You don't want some troll just abusing the system. You can also enable a submission cooldown. So Maybe you don't want to have one submission per user. You might want to enforce a cooldown. Once the user has sent in a submission, they cannot send in another one until this cooldown is over. And keep in mind, this cooldown is in days. I'm going to go ahead and revert this back to default. 
and keep in mind you can only have one of these checked at a time next up submission options so we can create a thread on submission which is a premium feature but what this will basically do is create a thread for each submission that comes in so we can go ahead and enable this since we have premium and i can show you what that looks like if you don't have this enabled, what Dino will do is just send all the forms into one channel like it does with regular logs. And then finally, you have the option to mention users. So if you want to mention your mods whenever a submission is submitted, you can go ahead and select their role here, or you can select at everyone or here within that channel. And then finally here at the bottom, you can actually add reactions to the submission message. If you'd like Dino to react to each of these submissions that comes in, you can go ahead and enable this. Then you can select the reaction you'd like Dino to add. And then with that, you can have your mods react whenever they've uh, viewed the form or you could even have like a little system going. So we'll go ahead and hit save here. We've got our appeals form set up and as you can see, it automatically selected it here. We can go back and edit the form. And as you can see, we've got our link up top. Here we've got another option to view submissions. And this will show us a list of everyone that has submitted a form. Here again at the bottom, we have another link for this form that you can share. And then we've also got some other options up here. So we can search by username or form answers. We have the option to search most recent, oldest, and uh, search in alphabetical order or backwards. And then we've got some filters. So we've got forms that have been approved, rejected, and then ones that are still pending. And finally, we've got the view form option, which will just take us right to the form. So this is what the end user would see once they click on the link. They'll be redirected to the Dino website and then they'll have this little view. Now, before we switch over to Discord, I kind of want to show you the process for the end user. So once they click on the link, they'll go to a page just similar to this, minus the view submissions button because the user would not have permissions to actually view submissions. So they just have all of this and then the submit button here. So we can go ahead and enter our answers here. And then we hit submit. And up to here, this is basically what the user would see. Since we disabled the one submission per user, we've got this little button here for us to create a new submission. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and demonstrate the appeals form in action. We'll go ahead and switch over to Discord and I'll show you what the appeal process is like. As you can see, we have our appeal one here. We get the questions, we can see the responses, and then we can actually approve and reject it right from Discord. So if I go ahead and approve this request, Dino will go ahead and unban or unmute the user depending on why the appeal form was sent. And then we can just go ahead and reject it which will just go ahead and reject the form. Essentially nothing will happen. Then we have another button for view history and this will basically pull up the mod logs associated with that user, specifically for their appeals. For this user, they don't have any previous submissions so there's nothing really to see here. And because we have the threads enabled for our submissions, I can go ahead and click on this to view the thread. So now that we've gone over that, let's actually submit an appeal form and show you guys what that's like. So I'm gonna use my alt for this. So now I'll go ahead and submit. As you can see, a new appeal has been generated. We get the same option so we can approve, which will go ahead and unmute the user since that's what we did. We muted Tesla of the muted role. So this will go ahead and unmute the user as well as approve this appeal. We can reject it, which will just reject the appeal and we won't do anything further. Then we can also view the history. As you can see, this account actually has some previous submissions that we can actually view. And if you run the modlux command, these submissions will also populate with that command as well. So this is the Discord in. If we go ahead and approve this, we get a message down here saying approved Tesla submission, they have been unmuted. And if we come back here, that user has been unmuted. And as you can see, Dino edits the embed to show who approved the submission. And the same would go for if we were to reject this user. So if I create a new submission here, and I'd also like to point out that users cannot just randomly submit appeals. The user actually has to be banned or muted in order for them to actually submit the form. If they are not, if they are no longer muted or no longer banned, the user will receive an error saying that you are unable to fill out this form. Or they might even receive a pop-up saying that they are currently not moderated. 
And now if we go ahead and reject this, we now have the rejected by and then the user. And also, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but there's also a neat little thing going on with the embed. So once we reject a form, the little embed strip color turns red. And then when we go ahead and approve an appeal, we get this, we get this little green line. Or pending appeals, it's just a blue line. So there's some color coordination going on here to make it easier to view which ones have actually been accepted, rejected, or that are still pending. So that's pretty much it for the Discord side of things. Uh, before we continue on to the dashboard, I also like to mention that you can actually block users from accessing the form. If so, if you got a user managing to abuse the system and you are completely tired of them, you know, abusing the system, you can go ahead and block that user. So from here, we've just got a button here. You can also do the same from the dashboard, which I will show you. But Dino will go ahead and block this user from submitting further appeals on this specific form. That's a cool thing you can do. And as you can see, this button only pops up when you go ahead and reject the user. If you're doing this from the dashboard, you can block the user either way. But this is just a neat little feature you can do. So now let's go ahead and switch over to the dashboard. All right, so here we are back at the dashboard. If we go ahead and click the view submissions button here, we can view all of the submissions for the specific form. We also have the option to download this. So if you're into Excel spreadsheets and you like playing with data, you can download this and play with your form data. Now, if we click on a user, we can actually view their submission from here. So we get the user as well as their ID, the responses, and then we can also approve and reject forms from here as well. Since this form has already been rejected, we can't really do much here. And actually, if I were to try to approve this, we'd get an error saying that Dino couldn't unmute Tesla because they aren't muted. So, so with this, we can also delete the submission if we want. And then if you remember earlier, I did block this user on the dashboard here. I can actually go ahead and unblock this user. And if we go ahead and give this a refresh, this should change back to, this should change back to block user. So we have the option to block from here. There's also another view where we can block. So we can also block and unblock from here. Um, once you block a user, you might have to refresh the dashboard in order to get the unblock user. But then we also have the option to view, which is the same as just clicking on the form. And then we also have the same option to delete, which is also here, which is also here as well. So you've got different ways of doing things. That's pretty much it when it comes to the dashboard view. It's essentially just the same thing just on the dashboard. So this is a very useful feature. And I feel like a lot of servers will take advantage of this. So thanks for watching and catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe.